have her here today. So I uh, welcome Joanna, who's a recovering PhD chemist, a TED speaker, and a published author. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to her. Alicia and I will do some of the managing of the meeting. If when we do Q and A, we'll help get you in there. Also use the chat. But she, Joanna will lead us most of the way through. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Marian. Thank you, Alicia. Hello, everyone. I see so many familiar faces, although at the same time, I see many I don't recognize, which is uh, very exciting to me. I am so happy to spend about an hour or so with you talking about our strengths and talking about how we can be better leaders in these very unpredictable times. Uh, quick heads up, I tend to be very interactive in my sessions, so I will try to draw you in. Um, you, you can resist for sure, but uh, just know that I would love to hear your questions through the chat room. Um, I will ask you to react through the reactions button, so make sure that you found it on the bottom of the of the tab. Um, and we will even do some breakout rooms just so that you can even connect as a, as a community. So before we get going, uh, find that reactions button and give, give me either a thumbs up or a clapping hand. If you have done something unpredictable in the last few weeks. Okay, so give me a thumbs up if it was unpredictable. Give me a clapping hand if it was like, this is your jam. Being unpredictable is your jam. This is how you like to stretch the people in your life. Let's see. I'm looking around. I see some thumbs up. Anyone else? I see thumbs up. Yes. Thank you. Clapping hands from David. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I, um, I slept in a little later than usual on a weekday last week. And I remember um, being very amused how um, my family, how disorienting it was for my family. I did something unpredictable. Instead of getting up super early, I got up kind of late and it was confusing to them. And it kind of cascaded through our morning routine as a, as a family. Um, so um, it's worth noting that unpredictability has some good and some bad aspects of it that um, that we will be discussing this morning. So I will go ahead and um, start off by sharing my screen. So just give me a second here. All right, hold on just one second. So, what we want to talk about today is how to be predictable in unpredictable times. And the idea behind that, um, the question, that theme is really, how can we come out on the other side of this very unpredictable time stronger, better, and how can we continue to thrive throughout this time and not just survive as I definitely was in the survival mode, you know, early on in this, in this quarantine and in this transition time. Um, I remember um, about two, two decades ago, about 20 years ago, uh, as Marianne said, I'm a recovering PhD chemist. So I worked with a professor who, um, well, who was very unpredictable, brilliant mind, amazing human being, but unpredictable. And I remember how that made me feel. So every day he would show up at work at a different time. And I never knew what time that would be, which meant that my schedule would be affected by his unpredictability. I also remember, and that was even more, carried more sting. I never knew whether what we decided on the direction, the goal, the task that we decided on the week before or the, even the day before would still hold true on the day that he showed up. Um, as a result, I wasn't really enjoying my job. Yes, I still published. Yes, I still tried to do my best, but I know that I wasn't producing as much as I, as I wanted to. 
Um, and I keep thinking about the group, his research group. There was tension on the group. I remember there was a lot of competition. There was a lot of uncertainty. It was not a place where I thrived, for sure. And so I'm here to um, propose to you that it is a big deal to show up predictably, period, but especially in times of change. Why? Because engagement and productivity um, is on the line here. Um, just think about it. Um, we don't like to follow, and I don't think I'm alone in this, we don't like to follow leaders who are confusing, who lack clarity, um, who show erratic behavior because we don't know what to expect from them, right? And that erratic behavior splashes right back on us and causes us to be less engaged and less productive because it adds to our stress. And in times of change and in times of transition, we are already stressed, anxious, and worried. We are already fighting all the things that hijacked our emotions and cause us to be less productive. So that's the bad news. But here's the good news. In times of change, when so many things are unpredictable and we cannot control them, what we can control is how we show up. What we can control is how we show up for ourselves and for others. And that goes right away, straight away to the most authentic part of us, which is our talents and our strengths. And where our talents and strengths are, that's where we can tap into that uh, feeling of ease, excitement, enjoyment, and excellence. So that's what we want to talk about today. Because what I want you to come out in about an hour or so of our time together, I want you to come out um, with some ideas, practical ideas of how you can predictably show up for yourself and the people in your life, both at work and at home, whatever, who, however you define your team, that you can show up predictably and that you can come out on the other end of this uh, pandemic even stronger than you are today. So Gallup has done a lot of research around high-performing teams, most effective leaders, and what makes them uh, at the top of the heap. Um, they have done studies around 1 million teams, and they have conducted 20,000 in-depth interviews with leaders and 10,000 in-depth interviews with their followers. And what comes out of that, um, of that research is that we actually have a fairly good idea on about what makes effective leaders strong and uh, why others follow them. And here are the three points. They know their strengths and they have, they're intentional about looking for the strengths, for the best in others. They surround themselves with diverse strengths and diverse perspectives. No group think here. They actually welcome perspectives that challenge them and perspectives that fill in or strengths that fill in their gaps and their weaknesses. And they understand their followers' needs. So let's talk about the followers' needs. Turns out that based on Gallup research, followers, and as you know, we're both leaders and followers at any one point, they have a pretty good idea of what it is that they need and look for in their leaders. They look for trust, they look for compassion, they look for stability and hope. And so as leaders, and we are all leaders, if you have just even one person following you, it is really important that you find a way to build trust, to show compassion, to provide stability and inspire hope in others. And here's how, how we know about these uh, four types of feelings that are really important to the followers. Gallup actually asked two very specific questions of 20,000 followers. They said, 
they ask them, what leader has the most positive influence in your daily life? And then they ask them to list three words that best describe what this person contributed to their life. Very, very specific, uh, specific questions. So it's all, it's all good that we now know that we need to tap into our strengths and then we need to meet the needs of our followers in order to reduce their stress and allow them to be at their most engaged and productive even in unpredictable times. But we have a challenge on our hands. And the challenge is that each one of us has a certain lens, a certain perspective on life. And that perspective on life is absolutely defined in part by our strengths, our natural tendency to think, feel, and behave. And that lens will cause us to then meet the needs of others in a way that's unique to us. And that's actually an amazing thing. There's nothing wrong with that. As long as we pay attention to um, how we communicate our strengths and um, and as long as we um, look for strengths in others and try to meet them with without interfering with in their lane but staying in in our lane as well so here's what i would like us to do i would like us to actually zero in on those four needs of the followers even before we talk um, our, about our strengths um, because, um, because we need to keep them in mind as we, uh, as we talk about the strengths. So trust, compassion, stability, and hope. As I told you, Gallup has done a lot of research around uh, most effective teams and leaders. And what they have found is that really each one of us has a certain default setting, meaning um, that the same situation can create a very, very different response from each one of us. Things that are really easy for us uh, could be difficult for others. Things that trigger us might energize someone else. And that's important for us to know. Now, each one of us makes stuff happen and get others on board. And we all care about relationships and we all consider the options and, and the future steps. But no question, each one of us has a certain preferred setting. And when a, um, in times of change, in unpredictable times, we absolutely gravitate towards one of those uh, settings more than others. So some of us like to make things happen. And um, well, these are, the, these are the executors. These people are all about uh, being able to uh, take an idea and know how to put it into into practice, how to kind of they're the boots on the ground. Um, give me a thumbs up right now if you think that maybe you are more than all the other categories. That is your default setting. You like to get things done in life. When I look at my team of four, meaning my coworkers, my husband and my two college kids as we're all quarantined together, um, I can clearly see how my husband uh, has been um, the person who has been offering his executing default setting to us all throughout this quarantine time. Um, so uh, he was the one who was way ahead of us, our neighbors. I would even say even the nation um, in preparing for this quarantine. He could see that it was coming down the pipeline and he was getting our pantry ready and he was getting us ready with masks. Um, he was definitely, um, he had an idea and he was putting it into practice. Then there are some of us who are the influencers. We get others on board. We, um, oh, those of us who have this default setting, we get excited and we get motivated by um, getting others excited about what's important to us. And we have this ability to get others, um, others, others to, the, uh, to the start line. 
and keep running with them so that we get to the finish line as well. Give me a thumbs up if you think you might be uh, the influencer. Um, and let me tell you a little bit more about who influencers are. Um, they at times tend to be a little impatient. There's a sense of urgency about them. They can turn ideas into action and they can convince others that they are worthy, ideas worthy of pursuing. And, um, and they oftentimes have the ability to put their thoughts and their ideas into eloquent words so that they can inspire others into action. In our family, that influencer is me. And so as my husband was getting ready, getting us ready for the quarantine, I was the one who was always making sure that the entire family is on board with whatever the next big idea was. I was checking on everyone. I was getting them excited. I was always convincing them that it would be okay. Um, this, this was definitely kind of my lane. And then there are those of us who are very relational. Um, we are all, those of us who have this default setting, we're all about, um, well, moving a group from a group to a team. Uh, we care about relationships. We want to check on everyone on the team and, and check in and see how they're doing. Um, give me a thumbs up if that's you and you definitely know that you tend towards um, a more relational approach, uh, approach to life. In our family, on our team Wiesinger, that's my daughter. Uh, she has been so good during this quarantine to check in on everyone, to kind of slow down life for us just a little bit and ask us how we were doing and, um, and even help us process through some, through some feelings. She's definitely my go-to when I don't even know what I'm feeling, but I know that I need to process through, through something. So those of you who uh, lead with this uh, relationship uh, bent, uh, we are glad to have you to have you in our tribe. And then the final default setting is that of um, strategic thinking. So those of you who um, who are strategic thinkers, you stretch the rest of us to towards the future. Sometimes by looking at the past mistakes, sometimes by creating uh, and offering us some really good new ideas. Um, give me a thumbs up if you think that you are definitely a strategic thinker. That is your default, uh, default setting. In our family, a family of four, my youngest son is the strategic thinker. So during the quarantine, he has been the one offering um, very... Um, non-emotional um, approach to the statistics that are being thrown at us. He has not been swept by emotion at all. He has often helped us break down kind of the complex uh, data into some simple nuggets that the rest of the family could take away and, and uh, kind of uh, deal with this very unpredictable time. So I hope that you have been kind of, as I've described these four settings, I hope that you've been processing not just through what your default setting is, because you have one, even though we each do all four, uh, but also how you offer these to others. And in fact, that's what I would like to do right now. In a minute, I'm going to send you into breakout rooms of about three, three to four. And in those breakout rooms, I would like you to share with one another what you think is your default setting. And there's no wrong answer. You know what's, um, uh, what the correct answer is. So what is your default setting and how are you offering that default setting during this quarantine time, either to people at home or your team at work? Um, so let me just... Let me get into the breakout rooms right now. I'm going to give you about five minutes to connect. Make sure you introduce yourselves uh, to each other and then answer what your default setting is and how you're offering it to others. Okay, here we go. I'll see you in a few minutes.
Hi there. Good morning. Hello. How Good morning. is everyone? Good. So I'm unmuting everyone. Why don't we go around and um, tell us your name and your company. I'll go first. I'm Alicia. I'm with the Metroport Chamber. Um, I would say my default, default. setting is relationship, relational, and um, I have four kids, so it's not hard to take the temperature of the relations in the in the family. But um, my husband's definitely the strategic thinker, so he's getting us a plan while I'm making sure everyone is happy. But um, who wants to go next? You can just go. I'll go next. Uh, Michelle Allen with Lucas uh, Family Funeral Homes and Cremation Services. Um, I would definitely be on the executing side. I don't know, is that ex executive or executing? That might sound really bad, but um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm an old fashioned Franklin Covey day planner checklist girl. And so, um, and I do cheat sometimes and add the extra item I put on there just so I can check it off. But I uh, get it done. And, you know, especially during the things that are happening right now kiddos, you know, are getting a little lax and of course sleeping different, doing things different. So I'm one of those, okay, that's fine. But between this time and this time, we're taking care of this, you know, whether it's, whether it's there, I got a girl in college, whether it's her bills or whether it's, you know, organizing something. So I'm definitely execution. That's awesome. Hi ladies, um, gentlemen, I'm Danielle Godwin. I am with the Bowden uh, in Keller. I'm the director of sales and marketing. And I think um, for me, at least in my role, it's a little important to tap into, a, you know, a small percentage of each of those, but I definitely begin with the relationship part. I think, you know, in sales, you're on the front end and, and certainly uh, with a team, you want to make sure that you're, you've got those relationships going and communication is key with, within those relationships. Um, but also, you know, have to do a lot of that execution part as well. In a small business, you, you kind of have to tap into a little bit of that um, as well. So um, I, I have to say, I like to tap into a little bit of the checklist part as, as well, helping people um, on the team understand what their next steps are and what's expected of them so they can, they can execute. Um, flawlessly on their end. Okay, I'm, uh, sorry. I'm Scotty with CycleWorks Marketing. Uh, I definitely feel like I'm in that front quarter, that first quarter. I, I was kind of on, like when, she, when Joanna was talking about the pandemic, I was like her husband. I was on the front line thinking, okay, well before any of this blew up, I just knew what people's perceptions were. And so I said, okay, hon, you need to get toilet paper. And my wife was thinking, nobody in the world is going to be, be getting toilet paper. That's the craziest thing ever. <laughs> and I said, you don't understand. When people get into a pandemic situation, they do weird things. I said, go ahead and get some now. And go ahead and get soup now. And so we were on top of that when it went up happening. But it... I like the checklist. I love hearing the other person that mentioned the day timers. I'm very much that way. I want a process. I want a checklist. I want to go after it and see how we can get on top of it as soon as possible. I'm Terribia with Murray Media, and we handle the 35 West Living Magazine. We're new with the Metroport Chamber, and I am more of a relationship go again being sales and being focused and uh staying organized you know got to be unorganized to you know do your top list of what you got to do what you need to do uh just stay on top thank you i like your virtual background oh it's very well done <laughs> thank you also you're gonna love this chamber i'm gonna tell you that right now so welcome Thank you. Yeah, I totally Thank agree. You, um, I'm, I'm Carolyn Clark. Um, I'm right there with Michelle and I knew there was a reason why I liked her so much is that I'm an executor as well. Um, I stood around and kind of stared at the wall for a few days and right after that I decided to get over myself and now I'm taking classes. And uh, I live by lists as well. And every day I have a, a day planner and a checklist that that I work off of. And it's been a little empty, 
but it's starting to fill up now. And I think that I'm going to get through the next two weeks of this just fine. Good job, Carolyn. I'm Darcy McFarlane. I'm with the town of Westlake. I'm a facilities parks and rec assistant and event manager. And I'm sorry, I just jumped into the meeting right before we broke out into the breakout room. So I picking up on what everyone's saying. I'm not sure if I have the right terminology. Um, I'm in relation, uh, relationship person. And I love going out and meeting people and bringing them into our events. Um, but also an ex executor. Um, I like, I love my list, I love crossing things off the list, making sure things get done. Um, in the event part of my job, you know, making sure the events run smoothly. Everybody's doing what they're supposed to managing those events and look for that kind of stuff. So uh, also a procrastinator. So the last uh, the, uh, <laughs> working from home is not uh, help that part, but I'm uh, took me a little while to get up to speed, but I think I'm there now. So looking forward for the next couple of weeks, making, making better use of my time. I think we have one more. I was going to bookend it since Alicia started. Erwin, are you there? Nope. Well, I'm Marianne Weathered and I am the membership and programs manager at the chamber. Um, I love this combination of Michelle and Carolyn who have been with uh, supporters for so long and then some new faces and folks and names. Um, but I am in the relation, rac relational mode. Um, I knew kind of with Alicia, both and of us with the kids in the similar age group and then um, managing kind of the membership at the chamber is bringing people together and, and doing all of that. So that's sort of where my uh, strengths lie, but there's a little bit of everything in there too, but those are the primary. So appreciate everybody sharing and, and welcome all. Does anybody have any other comments or questions they want to add while we have a few minutes left? Or does anybody need anything during this trying time that we should let other members know about? They say that you, you can get into settings and change it to where you can add your last name, but I'm not seeing that. Do you know where it is? I don't know if you're on the phone, if you can, Carolyn, if you hover over where it has your name on the picture in the top right, do you get three little dots? It's mute yeah. and then three little dots yeah i've got the three little dots up. Okay. if you click on the three little dots you should come up with a couple of options and one of them is rename i can we can actually rename you as a host do you want to yeah, i can that? i can do it now that i i thought it was okay. carolyn but i didn't know if it was another carolyn <laughs> no it's it's me i've changed it thank you yeah. oh you got it okay good and you can add your company um and you can even market yourself like um, Murray Media uh, in the background is done. That's a virtual background. So that is done at the bottom of your entire screen where it says stop video, start video. You, there's a little arrow and you can click on that and you can choose a virtual background. Um, my computer is too old. I need a green screen in order to do it or else I look like a zombie. But um, it also has to do with the color in your background. We found this weekend, if you put up a darker background, it, it works better. Alicia, I know we've played with, we've played with this a couple times, but yeah. So you yeah, can I have a lime, lime green one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like your lime green. Back. Good to see you. Give me a quick hello. Give me a quick wave. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking with the number of people on this webinar, maybe you didn't get a chance to, to share, but those of, you, um, those of you who did, or maybe if you didn't, would you, um, would you just give me a thumbs up if you were willing to share uh, something that, that was on your mind as far as what your default setting is and how you're offering it to others? And then go ahead and unmute yourself and let us know. Um, I see David. David, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, tell me what, what you shared with your group. Uh, we just talked about what we're doing for the community, um, making sure that we're uh, using what we know how to do well in order to facilitate not only community 
but also the first responders and then the staff that we have internally that don't have work right now and being able to facilitate some assistance mm -hmm. with them as well. Mm, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, anyone else? I'll take I'll take one more. I'm looking David, for David. Who are you? I'm sorry to interject, but who are you with? Because I don't know that everyone your your name is just on the screen. But <laughs> I'm sorry. We're with the Bowden Event okay, Center. Okay, the Bowden Very good. Uh huh. And David, what about you specifically as an individual part of the team? Which of the default settings do you think you resonate with? Uh, I'd like to thank influencer, but I don't want to, <laughs> uh -huh. I don't want to assume that I'm much of an influencer, but I try to keep a positive attitude and, uh, yeah. making sure people understand that, you know, we still got work to do. It's a different, different style of work and that yeah. things will get back. I mean, it's not, inevi it's inevitable that it will get back to normal. Mm -hmm. It's just being patient, understanding that this too shall pass. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing. Anyone else? I'll take one yes, more. I see you, Suzanne. I'm going to unmute you. Uh, I'm Suzanne with Cruise Planners, not just cruises, and I am strategic for sure. Okay. Um, that when I saw that, I'm like, oh, that's that's my number one. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, I am reaching out via gentle emails and phone calls. And uh, you know, this is not the time for me to be selling travel. And it's you know, it's been a really hard time in the industry, but it's, we're going to come back. We're going to mm -hmm. come back. And Kathy had mentioned in our group, not only is my company fiscally mm -hmm. strong but as mm -hmm. an individual i put money aside for emergencies never thinking it would be anything like right. this right right yeah uh, thank you suzanne for sharing um i love that you're mindful that, that you're first of all very clear on what it is that's strong about you and then you're generously offering it to others um even in light of these very unpredictable times thank you well, so if you remember, um, we're after two things, really. The big picture view is it's really important as leaders for us to know what it is that's strong about us because it's the most authentic, most genuine part um, that has to do with us. And then it's really important that we use our strengths to offer to others to meet the followers' needs because as I told you before, Yelp is very clear. Our followers are very clear on what it is that they want from their leaders and they want to trust to see trust compassion stability and hope so let's dive in into uh, each one of these uh, four needs one at a time and i want you to keep thinking about your own default setting and how you can build each one of these how you can meet each one of those needs for the people at home and at work uh, in your sphere of influence. So when it comes to trust, trust, uh, you probably intuitively know this in your gut, pun intended, intuition is a big part of, of trust, but trust is the do or die foundation for leading predictably. Um, I just had a conversation with, uh, with a client, with a colleague yesterday, and he pretty much said, you know, if, if I listen to my gut and if I, smell something fishy, so to speak, I don't lean into a relationship. I will still be cordial. I will still be, um, you know, I guess professional, but, uh, but I listen to my, to my gut. Sadly, um, we have entered the pandemic season, the pandemic with a trust deficit, uh, worldwide. So, um, studies show us that 66% of workers throughout the world um, didn't trust the leadership even before the pandemic. And you can only imagine um, how this number has catapulted uh, during the pandemic. And 13% of US workers before the pandemic didn't really see their leadership as communicating effectively and clearly. And that number has not improve during these unpredictable times. So building trust um, is a big deal because it really is, trust is the shortcut, right? That can kind of cut through the junk and can get us to the meat of, a, uh, of the relationship. It really um, speeds up the efficiency in the, in the workplace, takes the clutter away. So my question for you is how what can you do with your default setting, with your strengths, 
to show others that they can trust you. And David, when he was sharing about how he's um, supporting the community, I heard some, I heard genuineness and authenticity in his voice. So when it comes to trust, building trust with your team at home or at work, it's really important that you talk about the difficult topics. Silence is not golden in this case. Remember, trust is the foundation of any relationship and really at the heart of trust is walking the talk. So as you talk about the difficult topics, be as detailed as you can be. Lay out the scenarios that you are considering and then follow through invite the questions from the others and you cannot over communicate you cannot um, do enough check-ins at this point um, uh, with your uh, with your team uh, trust is at the at the heart of this uh, of your relationship with others around you and it's important that you walk the talk and then there is compassion so Studies definitely show us that as leaders, we don't mind necessarily showing compassion or showing our heart or the vulnerable part of us at home, but at work, we struggle with that. And of course, if you follow, follow Brene Brown's work, then you know that is the case. She is all about uh, showing that those vulnerably, courageously, and imperfectly, uh, both at home and at work. Studies show us that um, engagement or disengagement tracks right alongside um, organizations that do not have the heart. Um, managers who don't show compassion, who are not vulnerable, who um, haven't found a way to show their team, to show their people that they care. If you notice other words, uh, remember there was, uh, Gallup had done one-on-one, -on -one, over 20,000 interviews with followers and asking them for specific words. The words for compassion were friendship, happiness, and love. Brenda, so what can I in interject really quick? Yes, Going please. back to trust, um, can you give some best practices? Uh, Fani had a question. How can you build trust virtually with your team? And you mentioned check-ins, but are there other best practices that um, you could interject with um, for this time building trust virtually? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think uh, actually Mark, who's here on the call, and I were chatting about how um, one of the simple things that we can do if that is available to you um, to switch from a phone call to a video so that you can actually see the other person. And when you talk to them, as I, as I mentioned here, um, bravely, um, broach the difficult topics. So ask them what's on their minds. Just um, just yesterday, in even our little family, my 20-year-old asked a very simple question, are we going to be okay? And what he meant by that was, are we, our family, will we be okay financially? He's a college kid and he's thinking ahead. Now, my husband and I thought that we had done a super great job of communicating that we are stable, that we are fine, um, that we've been very transparent. Apparently we haven't. So my, your, your question is a really good one and my uh, takeaway would be over communicate. Ask the questions, what's on your mind? How can I come alongside you even better? What's worrying you at this time? What are you anxious about? How are you doing on the family front? What do you need at work? How can I support you better? Does that answer some of, does that touch on the, I'll be glad to come back to that in a minute. So compassion, as I said, uh, if, if your company, if your firm, if your team has the heart, engagement and productivity will follow suit. So how do you show others that you care? That's a really important question. And it will, the answer to that question will differ depending on your default setting, right? So in general, however, the quickest way to show others that we care is to acknowledge and affirm their feelings. Now, for some of us, that's 
really easy to do. If those, uh, those of us who tend to be more relational, those words, I hear you, I get it, that is really difficult, or I'm sorry you're going through it, those words tumble out really easily. For others, um, for others, and I'll raise my hand here, it's not as easy. And yet I continue to stretch myself to find ways that are authentic to me to acknowledge and affirm others because that is the only way to lower their stress level, their anxiety level, when we crawl into the pit with them and say, I gotcha, I, I see you. And then, again, walk the talk of, I am for you. I am for you, right? So um, compassion without policy, um, the two really have to go hand in hand. And once again, I would suggest to you that you cannot err on the side of over-communicating. Again, you don't have to share everything, but uh, that it wouldn't be appropriate for your team to know. Um, at the same time, go as far as you can uh, as you can because remember when we come out of this people won't even remember necessarily specific conversations but they will remember how you made them feel during the unpredictable time then there's the stability um so it's a it's a funny thing right where in unpredictable times Somehow we have to find a way to convey to the people around us um, that we are still, that there's still an element of stability, meaning we're still committed to our, our vision, our mission, to our core values. And transparency is um, a huge aspect of building stability into our relationships. Um, and once again, when it comes to transparency, we might stumble over our words, uh, but it is really important that, um, that we try to be as transparent as possible. There are, I feel like there are two aspects to offering stability to others. There's the practical side. Do you have the right equipment? Do you have the right software? Do you have um, everything, kind of the, the, the tangible things that you need to, uh, to be at your best, even when you're working remotely. But then there's the psychological one that speaks to the security that, um, that we want to feel. Is my job okay? And I know as leaders, we might not be able to answer that question today, but it is important for us to acknowledge that that question most likely is percolating in everyone's mind. And so pretending that it's not, is not, um, uh, a strong thing to do um, as a leader. So in practical terms, I want you to just kind of be thinking, so how do I bring transparency to others? One way to do it is outline and talk through the changes that might be coming down the pipeline um, on your team. Do it as difficult as it might be. And hold on or even introduce some new routines and celebrate the wins. Um, so that fine balance between um, a lot of changes, a lot of transitions, at the same time, really fighting hard for the things that will never change, the core values, how we show up as leaders for our, um, for our team. And then finally, hope. So hope stands on really on the foundation of trust, stability, um, and compassion. And hope is all about, uh, hope stretches us towards the future. Um, so um, as leaders, if you remember my original slide, we don't need to predict the future. No one is asking us to do that. We simply need to be predictable in that we need to be congruent with who we are our strengths, our core values, who the people around us know us to be. Other words that uh, came out of the Gallup studies for hope, direction, faith, guidance, um, 
And so how, how do you inspire others during unpredictable times? It's as simple as talking about the goals and you can get as granular as you can. Today's goals, this week's goals, this month's goals. It's a big deal to talk about those goals. It gives us focus and it inspires us to, well, wake up in the morning and face the day, even when so many things are unpredictable. And then the equally important part is, as a leader, is to look at our team, look at our followers and say, and hey, as we talk about these goals, I need you. You have a role to play in bringing what's best about you, your strengths, your expertise, your, um, your perspective, so that we can reach those goals. And I have full confidence in you that you will. Okay, so you have a lens on life and that lens is absolutely defined by your innate talents and strengths, your own superpowers. Stay in your lane, hire out your weaknesses, offer your strengths to others so that they can be more engaged and productive at work. Show up predictably. Predictably as in not in a robotic, same every day type of way, but in a way that is expected by others and is congruent with who you are and who you represent um, within your company. So what, is that, what are the big takeaways? How to be predictable in unpredictable times? Play to your strengths. Play to your strengths. Keep reminding yourself that you are strong and unique. You need to recognize what your strengths are and then give them away. Give them away by meeting the people in your life, by meeting the needs of the people in your life, at home and at work. And then I can't stress this enough, over-communicate. You cannot err on the side of communicating well. So here's my question for you. What is one step that you can take today to show up stronger for your people, to tap in into your strengths, to give them away, and to build trust, show compassion, provide stability, and inspire hope. We have a few minutes, so if you don't mind, I would love to um, maybe open up and um, ask you if you would share maybe an insight or a question or that one step that is starting to percolate in you on how you can um, offer offer your strengths to others. If you would, you, you would just give me a thumbs up um, and uh, maybe you can share your thoughts with us. Or Alicia, if there's anything in the chat that we can tap into. Um, uh, Michelle Allen had a story of someone possibly going above and beyond. I don't know if she is ready to share that. Sure, I can. Okay, go ahead and share that. So it's, you know, obviously I'm with the funeral home, so that carries a whole bunch of weight with it right there. So just the atmosphere, team members, things like that, there's a, there's a lot that's, that needs to be fed, so to speak, on many different levels. And so um, one of the neat things um, that occurred is our directors um, and, and the bombers, I won't get into details of that, but they're kind of two different roles, but can be one and the same. Um, so, you know, the funeral situation and visitations and things like that, you know, visitations are non-existence, the funerals are, but they're very, very limited, but people still have the, um, the bend and the tradition to send flowers and to do those types of things. And so we're still receiving all of that. So then you have the other factor of assisted living and all of those communities where people are not allowed to have visitors. So they, some of my directors coordinated together with several different locations via uh, Grapevine, Keller, uh, Hearst, where um, a lot of the families don't keep the flowers, they'll keep the plants, but they don't because now they're not going to the graveside. So anyway, they end up taking those flowers and donating them to these assisted living. We can't go inside, so we have to leave them at the entry. But then they take those and separate them and make them into crafts for the seniors to be able to make these gifts 
and then they're able to leave them at the front and even sometimes sometimes some of their family members can come pick them up so they're actually I don't know taking something sad and beautiful into something beautiful and sad you know what I mean like it's just a, a full rotation so but they came up that with on their own and it has just been extremely well received I just thought it was a really cool idea yeah that is a really good idea thanks thanks for sharing so much I um yeah, I, I think that now is the time, many of you probably, uh, I mean, we hear this all around, this, this idea of not just looking at, um, at the negative aspects of the unpredictable times that we're in, but really for looking for opportunities, opportunities to um, not just to, of course, sustain our, our companies and grow them, but um, opportunities to for the lack of a better word to bless someone else right to bring uh, to make their world a little better so thanks for that very much Joanna uh, Fani yeah. had her hand raised if yeah you want please. to go to her who was it again Alicia Fani with XM performance yeah yeah so yeah, um yeah how are you doing Good. um so what I wanted to share is actually um um, a gift that we shared at the team or for the team at XM Performance last Christmas. And I feel like uh, um, this pertains to uh, this call today. We actually do use the Gallup strengths um, to look at each other's strengths and uh, um, how the team, um, you know, um, can um, leverage on those strengths. And we had these Yetis made with our strengths, um, you know, um, listed off and in these hard times I feel like um, this is a great reminder you know that one I have a great leadership two um, I know what my strengths are and 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 you know how I can leverage these um, strengths as well so um, I, I you know we didn't foresee this coming at all but I just feel like uh, especially in these difficult times um, reminding your team and letting them know like or just having something um to see and look at um you know what their strengths are you know that's very important absolutely thank you yeah. for uh, for sharing that and funny if you open the cupboards of my kitchen you would see five mugs with all of our strengths there are five members of my family and we each have a mug and yes um sometimes we all drink from them at the same time, just to remind ourselves that uh, we'll make it through and we'll continue to offer our strengths to others. There's one final point that I wanted to maybe drive just a little bit more, that idea of over-communicating with others. I was, as Mark and I were chatting, this um, sending a quick text, sending a quick email to someone, when you think it, when you feel it, do it. Uh, that has been kind of my mantra during this time. And as a leader, when you do your check-ins, leader of your, of your family at home or your, your team at work, remember the three Fs. Make them focus, make them frequent, and make them future bound. Meaning with that idea of not just what we're going through right now, but what it is that our goal is and how we can contribute individually and collectively as a team to reach those goals. I think that's all that I have. I'll be glad to answer any questions that you yes. might have. If anyone has a question, go ahead and ask it now. While we give you a chance to thank, we are doing these webinars as a member benefit through April. Um, thank you, Joanna, so much for yes, starting us you. off with our emotional side of business and then Next week, we're going to be doing um, a, with now CFO a financial side and how to um, have a roadmap to recovery for some of our small businesses. And then we'll end with um, Scotty Smith, who's actually on the phone, and he's going to be doing a how to market yourself through these times on a um, not a shoestring budget, but what you can do that will actually affect the long term and i have all of that stuff we'll be adding to our website and you'll get information regarding it on our latte so again we want this to be for you our members a thank you and uh, um, we want this to help you so please mm -hmm. give us comments and share with us anything you want 
Marianne, did anyone have their hand raised or a question? I think, I think we answered it all. Okay. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you for joining yes. us. And the, our webinars are going to be every Tuesday from 11 to noon on, um, through the month of April. And then we have our coffee in the kitchen and then our quarantini coffee in the kitchens Wednesday mornings at nine. Quarantinis are uh, Thursday afternoons at four. They're a little more casual, but we're hoping to have a board member come on, answer questions, give updates from our communities and our hospitals. And um, so look forward to seeing you all then. Marian, do you have anything? That's pretty much it. I just wanted to let everybody know that I have saved the chat. So if anybody has any follow-up questions or didn't get any details in the chat, feel free to reach out to me and I can kind of help connect you if need be. Um, but we appreciate you all being on here today and we thank Joanna for uh, all the great information. Thanks very much, guys. Happy hands. Bye. Thank you for joining Happy us. Happy hands. <laughs>